Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're here in the new shop, we're gonna continue with our electric project. So as you can see behind me, I've already gotten started with a couple of things. Let me take you over and show you what we got going on. For starters, we've got one circuit. We run our one GFI outlet, which is called the service outlet for our panel. From there, we tap off the line side of this GFI. A little bit more about that. In garages or outbuildings, um, GFI receptacles are required versus your standard outlet that you have in the home. There's two sides to the GFI outlet. There's a line side, which means the power coming from the source, and then there's a load side which means it's the GFI protected side of the outlet, which you can feed other devices from downstream, and those devices will also be GFI protected. I tap off the line side of this because not all the devices I have on this one circuit need to be GFI protected. So from there, we go out of the line side of the GFI outlet, up and around, and we come down here to this light switch. This light switch is for a porch light, which I installed outside, and I'll show you a picture of that right here. We take from this power source again, I run down here and we hit a GFI outlet again. The reason why I put another GFI versus tapping the load side of that outlet was that sometimes LED lights don't play nice GFIs, sometimes they do as a phenomenon. So I wanted this porch light to be on the line side of that outlet, not GFI protected. Lights don't need to be GFI protected. So we mounted this other GFI outlet here on the same circuit because I did tap off of the load side of this and run power around our garage door over here to an outlet right here that's gonna be for our garage door opener. Why did I do it this way? Well, a couple things. Um, this outlet, as you can see, is a standard outlet and it doesn't look like a GFI, but since it runs off the load side of that GFI outlet, it is GFI protected. Why didn't I just run a GFI outlet up here? Well, code states that GFI outlets have to be readily accessible. That outlet is up high, doesn't convey in the frame that I'm showing you in the camera, but if I, you know, for reference, if we move forward, you can see that sucker's up there. So that's not readily accessible. Our garage door is gonna be, our garage door opener, excuse me, is gonna be up there. So I needed an outlet to be higher. And if you have an actual GFI outlet, it's not readily accessible. So there's a standard outlet that's GFI protected much lower. So that's pretty much all we have in that circuit. We have our service outlet, our porch light, this one GFI and the garage door outlet. What we're gonna get started with now is lighting because it's really kind of dark in here, even with these windows. It does give you some decent light, but not adequate working light. So especially working with electricity, um, I would like to see what I'm doing a little bit more uh, clearly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install some uh, what's called high bay lights. They're LED lights. And you've probably seen them a million times on other people's YouTube videos. They look kind of like a UFO or a flying saucer. They cast like kind of a wide beam down. So it covers a lot of area and they're perfect for when you have a high ceiling like this. So our building is 26 by 40, it's 26 wide by 40 long. And what we're gonna do, we bought five high bay lights and we're gonna start on this third purlin. There's gonna be one here, one here. We're gonna skip a truss, one there, one there. That's gonna end that side. We're gonna skip a truss and come over and do a third one over here. Why not six? Because if you guys remember, we're gonna be building a room right here. There's gonna be a loft over it. So. I don't need to waste um, that much lumens. They're 21,000 lumens a piece, those lights on this loft area. It's just gonna be storage. So there will not be a sixth one. It'll just be one, two, three, four, five along this side, which should be more than enough. Now to wire everything up, we're using what's called MC cable, which is this armor clad cable you see here behind me. It's a flexible conduit with wire inside of it. Now this is code in a lot of areas. You have to have your wire in some type of conduit in an uh, outbuilding or garage. MC is perfect for this application. Now down low here, where it's accessible by hand, we're using cable clamps um, to secure our cable so that it's nice and tight and no one can pull on this or rip them free. When we run our light circuit, we're gonna tap in, we're gonna create a new outlet right over here. And as soon as we go up high enough where it's not accessible by hand, we're gonna use zip ties to secure it to the building frame. That's 100% allowable, you can do that, and it's gonna save us a lot of time, especially when I gotta be up high running a whole bunch of wire overhead. Another reason is because I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with self-tapping screws, but whenever you're drilling or securing these screws into metal, um, these screws have kind of like a chisel point head on them, which kind of drills out the metal at the same time and taps it for the threaded part of the screw. Really great invention, but they're kind of a pain in the neck um, to get started. So when I'm up there high, maybe I'm rent a scissor lift or whatever, I really don't wanna be dealing with starting and stopping and messing up a bunch of times and pushing real hard and trying to get that hole started. 
zip ties are gonna be perfect. Now the actual electrical boxes, see these lights come with a short cord that you plug into a standard receptacle. So the actual boxes that we mount to these trusses, um, I'm not gonna secure those with zip ties, I'm gonna actually screw those in. But there's only five boxes, so that shouldn't be too big of a deal. But all the wiring is gonna be secure with zip ties. Now remember I told you sometimes LEDs don't play nice as GFIs. It's not common, but it does happen. Unfortunately, with these types of lights that we're installing, um, that since they do have actual standard plugs in them, they can plug into receptacles, I'm gonna have to use uh, GFI protection on them. Now, this is a GFI breaker, a GFCI breaker, excuse me. Um, so we'll just run our circuit off of that rather than having the same problem again where you have inaccessible GFI outlets on the ceiling. We'll just have them protected right at this breaker. This is uh, the day before when I filmed this portion of the video. So I'm gonna go gather up my materials. Uh, I'm thinking I might rent a scissor lift. I think just having a scissor lift would make life a lot easier. And I can just wheel myself around and get this done pretty quickly. Well, all right guys, it's 6.30 a.m. I just rented a nice little scissor lift from our local Home Depot. So we've got it off the trailer and uh, I'm gonna go move my truck out of the shop. And I think uh, we're gonna go get high. Not that kind of high, take it easy. So we hit our first snag. We got that zip tie through, but as I'm coming up here higher, I forgot that this double bubble insulation, uh, they have double-sided tape on the back side of these posts, these uprights here. So I can't snake a zip tie behind it. It just gets stuck. So we're gonna continue on uh, drilling holes and using the cable clamps. So here is our snap tight MC connectors. Um, these basically just slide on over the wire and then they snap on to the armored cable. So these metal boxes have pre-punched knockouts and um, you basically just hit them. They bend open and you grab them with a the plier and you wiggle them till they come out. Snake it into the box. There it goes. Sometimes I don't leave myself very much lax, so it's a little bit tight to snap in, but you get the idea. You wiggle it, push, and it goes right in. All right, so that was the initial piece of wire that we cut. We ran our circuit all the way up here into our box. I'm gonna head back down to get another wire now to make our connection. So these are the lights that we ordered. Now, if you guys have been watching YouTube videos about people building shops and uh, the lights, you'll see that everyone's using these lights by a company called Hyperlight or Hyperlink or something like that. Well, these I found on Amazon. Kind of a knockoff cheap version of it. Um, I think they were $53 a piece. They're, UF, they're called UFO lights. Um, really solid cast construction, heavy duty. Same type of deal, you got a hook to hang it by and you got a plug to plug it into your receptacle. I plugged it in last night in here, just this one into the uh, single outlet that I have and man, it is bright. So I can't speak obviously to the longevity of them, but in terms of functionality, I think they're gonna be great. Now the thing's mad at me. It's beeping at me, telling me I've been on the ground too long to get my butt back up in the air. All right, all right, I'm coming. So guys, wiring an outlet up or a receptacle is pretty simple. Your, um, your black wire or your hot's gonna go to your brass screws and your neutral will go to your silver screws and of course your green to ground. The only thing different about these that you might be used to at home is that in uh, residential electric, um, these ears or tabs stay on the receptacle and they kind of butt up against the sheetrock and then you have a wall plate that goes, goes on over this. Um, in commercial electric, you have these metal boxes and the covers that are made to fit on them fit kind of snug or, or to fit the box actually. So these little ears, they have these, um, these indentations in them. These are meant so that you can bend these off. Another thing that's important to note, your ground um, has to be bonded to the box itself and then to this green screw. When you make these connections, you take your ground wire and wrap it in the direction that you're gonna tighten the screw down. Um, I've seen this happen before. People will wrap it around the other way, and as you go to tighten it, it actually, the torque unravels it from the screw. So always wanna wrap it in a clockwise fashion around the screw so that when you tighten it, it pulls it snug. 
make sure you tighten down on your screws and your connections as tight as you can without stripping the screws. Uh, the number one cause of electrical fires that I've seen is loose connections. When things heat up, they expand and contract, and you start to get arcing. Um, that's not a good deal. So make sure you tighten down on your connections as tight as you can. So to hang these lights, this is what I've decided to use. These are called U-bolts, and basically they're gonna go right around this tube all the way up, and there's a bar right here that goes on top of our rafter, and we put some nuts on it, and it'll leave us a nice U-shaped space over here, because these lights have hooks on them. I don't know if you see the world, actually they have eye bolts, so the eye bolt will slide right around this hook, and it'll be suspended nice and sturdy that way. All right, so our first light is complete. We ran our wire, mounted our outlet, we suspended these U-bolts, which hook onto the lights to give you this nice safety cord. So we've wrapped it around our rafter and onto itself. Uh, I've zip tied the excess cord up here so it's not hanging and it's not touching the heat sink on the light. And I think we're good to go. So that's pretty much the process. I've got four more of these to do and I'm gonna try to fly through them and uh, we'll talk to you down on the ground. All right, we are all done. This lift came in super handy. We have four mounted, as you can see. There's one over here that I did not get yet, um, and we're not putting one over here. The reason being is there's gonna be a room right here. So there's not really any sense in mounting a light over a loft that's gonna be about this high. It's just, you know, you're gonna waste 21,000 lumens of a high bay light, doesn't make sense. Um, I could put a little pull chain light or just anything up there would be fine just to see what I'm doing, but I don't need this much light over the loft. So anyway, I ordered these from Amazon. They're $53 a piece. The ones that everyone is using, um, I believe hyperlink they're called. I'm not sure, but those are about 90 bucks a piece. So considerable savings. Um, the only thing sometimes dealing with Amazon is uh, this type of stuff happens here. We're waiting for one more light. Uh, I was supposed to be here yesterday. It wasn't in the fulfillment center, so I gotta go find one now, so. Uh, I guess I'm gonna return this lift and I'll have to figure something out. Maybe I'll do the unthinkable and put my extension ladder in the bed of a truck or something. They're super right, but you really don't get a sense of what they look like. It doesn't convey on camera, but it's super, super bright in here. I mean, it's like hospital bright. What I'll do is when the sun goes down, I'll come back out here and get a clip of them coming on. But for right now, we got the lift loaded back up on the trailer all strapped down and hitched up, ready to go back and return. I was kind of going to wait around and see if that other light showed up today, but I just checked Amazon. It doesn't look like anything shipped yet, so I guess we'll get this thing back. All right, guys, so it's not quite dark yet. It's 7.30, but it's getting there. I think if we head on over here to the shop and flick the switch, you guys might get an idea of just how bright these things are. Still got some ambient light coming through the windows. Oh yeah. So it really doesn't even look as bright on camera as it really is in reality. But I mean, these things, you cannot look at them with the naked eye. I'm looking at it through the phone and it's fine, but if you put your actual eyeballs on them, it's like looking at the sun. You get these like circular halos that go through your eyes. It's just terrible. But um, super, super bright. I'm really happy with them. Definitely still need one there. Um, and I think, because you can tell the back of the shop just from that relief joint in the concrete is a little bit darker than the rest of the floor. So one more right there. We'll light up the back. And then again, we're going to have a room right here. So I don't want to waste another um, high, high bay light for that area. So I am super happy with these. I am not super happy with Amazon because I'm missing my light and I had to return the lift. So we're gonna have to do some, uh, I don't know, backyard engineering to get ourselves up there. I use my extension ladder over here, but it will not reach. Yeah, we'll get it done one way or another if the light ever shows up. Really happy with these, 53 bucks a piece. I actually had an Amazon credit for, I think it was $157. So I really wound up paying virtually very little for these lights. And uh, 
I can't speak to the longevity of them, obviously. I just put them in, but if they last uh, even half as long as they say they last, I think it was a really good value. So, shop's nice and bright. We can start doing some work in here now, although we've got a lot more stuff to do to the shop before we can actually do any work in here. Um, we'll be looking forward to filming some of that for you guys. That's my installation. Hope you guys like them. Um, I'll put the link in the description for anyone who might be looking for a pair of these or more. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, however many you want. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.